Yet another episode of Annulment Proof, the only place on YouTube where marriage gets defined. I'm John Farrell, and uh, we're going to talk about my good buddy, Christopher West, probably the most serial violator of the marriage definition out there. I call him the Pied Piper of feminist marriage. And um, somebody was saying, hey, you should do a little Christopher West video. There is so much material. There's a mountain of stuff. And I it would take 27 hours to make one. So he said one little thing the other day, and I wanted to comment on it. Hopefully it won't go on too long. Uh, but this guy basically has turned the legal definition of marriage on its head. Thank you, John Paul II. St. John Paul II. And that's how we've got a huge problem. And everyone eats it up because everyone wants more love. I'm a broken record on this. You've heard it before. But let's just listen to a little of Christopher West. And then I've got some Aquinas and Pius XII to counter him to prove that what he is saying in his definition of marriage is actually a violation of nature and is it's a setup for failure. That's what he causes. This is why marriage is dead today, because it's not defined. It's a big pile of love. Um, here we go. By the way, when you listen to me, anything I say that's not Catholic or wrong, you just go ahead and push pause and comment your heart out in the comment section. I'm going to respond and we'll talk about it all year long, if that's what you want to do, because I don't just cut and run. Anyhow, let's get Mr. Excitement on here. See if we can get, how do you do this? I always figure, okay. And uh, maybe we'll make it a little bigger. See what he says. And hopefully I'll do my best. I'm going to do my best to blend all this in. Uh, here we go. Caution, like. Sorry, this he, some guy calls in and says, I want intimacy with my wife, but she's not interested. Something like that. That can be a euphemism that's hiding intimacy. something. Uh, and I would say to you as a husband, to examine your heart, what is it that you're really wanting? Okay, the answer would be conjugal rights, bro. Super simple. Because most women, if you are really, really wanting intimacy in the sense of vulnerable exposure of your heart and her heart and the closeness that comes from that. The problem with, quote, wanting that, that's fine and all. It's just that uh, that's not always available and that can be tough. And uh, then she's always in charge because she can say, you're, this isn't up to my standards, so it's not it's not a, a total gift of self, and you know how that goes. Anyway, here we go. There are there are few women, certainly some, and yeah, and right based here. on some well, of I'll what you later share, share about your wife, maybe your wife is struggling with intimacy and her life is afraid of it because of physical abuse. We'll get to that in a moment. But few women would resist a husband's initiative in wanting genuine intimacy, and sexual intimacy is legitimate and beautiful and true and and right in as much as the physical closeness corresponds to the emotional intimacy as well, right? If we're just looking for a physical release in the sexual act as men, uh, most women will not want that at all. We'll shut down. We'll say, I'm not interested. We'll make excuses. I'm too tired, et cetera. Because over the course of a marriage, part of why they quote, don't want that or whatever is they're feeling if they're doing all this Christopher West, NFP stuff, they are going to feel like a prostitute and used because it's like, okay, we've been waiting till the 13th of the month. It's the freaking 15th. What's up? Okay. Where's my prostitute? So check this out. I'm going to let here, let's, let's share that. I'm gonna look at, let's look at this for a minute and hopefully we don't make this take an hour. Okay. I'm going to do my best to hang on. Sorry. 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 Let me fix this. Fix it. Okay. Now, Casty Kanubi. Uh, Oops, sorry. Let me. I got to make this a little bit bigger. There, scoot this over. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Speaking of prostitutes, that's what your wife is on NFP. This is Cassidy Kanubi. Dig it. If both man and woman are party to such practices, that means uh, such practices where they explain earlier of trying not to get pregnant while going through the motions. They are not spouses at all. And if they first have. And from the first, if they have carried on thus, they have come together, not for honest wedlock. That means procreation primary. And we'll get more into that in a minute. But for impure gratification, okay, secondary ends. Both, If both are not party to these deeds, I make bold to say that either one makes herself a mistress of the husband and other translations use harlot, prostitute, 
or the other simply a paramour of his wife. So in other words, if you're not trying to get pregnant, she becomes a friggin' prostitute. And that's why they feel that way. So then you have to become a feminist husband and get in touch with your feminine side and all this crazy stuff. So it's a downward spiral, okay? We have to get back to the marital debt and what it actually is. P.S., and you keep going in Cassidy Kanubi, there's a lot there, but number 108, such wholesome instruction and religious training in regard to Christian marriage will be quite different. In other words, what marriage is, what the rules are, what the debt is, what the contract says, okay? is different from the exaggerated physiological education a.k.a. Christopher West, Chris Stefanik, and a, everybody else, for that matter. Father Mike Schmitz. I mean, the list goes on and on. What's his name? Mr. Beard. Uh, uh, Scott Hahn. Kimberly Hahn. I'll, I'm, I'm blocked by them all, I think. By means of which, in these times of our some reformers of married life make the pretense of helping those joined in wedlock. That's Christopher West. He's a reformer of married life laying much stress on these physiological matters. So he's all about laying max stress on the secondary ends, the intimacy, the feeling, uh, totally, in which is learned rather the art of sinning in a subtle way. What that means is you're putting the secondary ends primary, okay? You're saying, We'll, if we get, it's life giving love, they call it. So, in other words, love comes first. And if life comes, flows from that, so be it. No, life comes first. And if love flows from that, so be it. And I'm going to get into St. Thomas Aquinas on that too. Um, so, in other words, NFP is, is the art of sinning in a subtle way rather than living chastely. All righty. Let's go back and see what else he's got to say here. This is just code for there's no marital debt. Obviously, you shouldn't use your wife for selfish pleasure. However, you do have a right over the body. There is no right to this union of heart and mind and all that crazy stuff, which I'll also get to you from Pius XII. Right. Okay. If she knows that that's grave sin and she goes to hell for that, she probably wouldn't do it. Hopefully you marry the right person that understands, you know, heaven and hell and all that. But if marriage is just like this deal where you have to get consent every time, which is not true, then he, he has a point. But he's wrong on the definition. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm hoping I wasn't rambling with, with, let me, I got, I had the wrong tab on here. This, pardon me, just a doggone minute. Hang on a second. Share this tab instead. I think we need to back up. I think I goofed that up. Let me back up just a second. Here, this is what I meant. Woman, she's going to recoil from that and make various excuses. I have a headache. I'm too tired, et cetera, et cetera. And here, I just want to reference a very important statement. Yeah, I have a headache. I'm too tired. Wrong. It's not marital debt. Duh from Pope John Paul II in his Theology of the Body. This is, after all, the Theology of the Body Institute channel, right? He made headlines around the world in 1980. It was during a Wednesday audience address that was part of the Theology of the Body, in which he said, Jesus' words in the Sermon on the Mount, if a man even looks lustfully at a woman, he commits adultery in his heart. He says this applies also in marriage. It's not only because he looks lustfully at a woman who's not his wife, but precisely because a man looks lustfully at a woman, right? Marriage does not justify uh, a man treating his wife merely as an object for his selfish pleasure. When John Paul II said this in 1980, headlines around the world, things like this, Pope condemns sex even in marriage. Another article said something like this. Well, if you can't lust after your wife, who can you lust after? And the proper response to that question is no one. This is a little bit tricky, but there's no such thing as marital rape from a legal perspective because consent happens at the wedding, okay? So you have rights over your spouse, OK, so because you have consent, this is why what John Paul II is saying has never been said ever because he's flipped the legal definition of marriage on its head. He's saying the foundation is not the right over the body for procreation. It's the right to the personalist norm. OK. Lustful sexual behavior in and of itself is a terrible adulteration of God's plan 
for human sexuality. So this is the whole heart of the friggin' talk right here. Adulteration, adultery. This is the definition of adultery he gets right. And this is really good what he says here. But hang on. I got so much to get to. What does the word adulterate mean? It means to alter from its original purpose. Exactly. Which is why divorce alone is adultery because you're altering it from its original purpose. Even You don't have to get remarried. Just separation is adultery because marriage is the legal right to live together. Uh, that's a side note. The original purpose of the sexual union is the total gift of self. When I heard this, I slapped my forehead. Let's listen to that. What did he just say? Hang on a second. The sexual union is the total, total gift, of self. gift of self. Wrong. The original purpose of marriage, of the conjugal act, is the total gift of self. Buzzer wrong it's the right over the body for acts suitable for the generation of children that is the original definition that's all it that's what it is okay and you can't change it because it's nature this is why he violates nature when he says no the natural purpose of natural marriage is the total gift of self which has no definition legally which is why marriage is lawless we might as well Jump to uh, the other um, show notes here while I'm while I got this while I'm thinking about it. Hang on, share this tab instead. We're gonna blow through some of this here. Sorry, I, okay, here we go. Hold, oh, but da, 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 da. no, 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 no. Give me, give me the bigger thing. I want, I want this. Wait, excuse me. There. Okay. So, what is marriage? Here's Canon 1021 from the 1917 code. Uh, consent is the right, exclusive right, the perpetual and exclusive right over the body for acts which are suitable for the generation of children. Primary purpose. You don't have to generate total gift of self or maximum love or any of that kind of stuff. You just have to generate children. That's what nature is. That's why we share that with the animals, okay? They generate offspring. They don't generate anything else. That's all you need to be able to do, okay? Ah, now, uh, and by the way, when you do take the definition of marriage that Christopher West has, you cannot define it. And the New Code of Canon Law commentary, page 1357, it admits that it is impossible to make a complete listing of the rights and obligations after, you know, with the spirit of Vatican II, because you no longer have the right over the acts, you right for the body for acts, you have the right to all this intimacy which is basically from here to the moon and back. So there is no definition of marriage anymore. If you follow Christopher West and John Paul II, Vatican II, and their proposed legal definition. By the way, none of this, all this Vatican II stuff, they never officially changed it. They just did a snow job on everybody. And everyone went, yeah. And everyone's like, go Christopher West, more love. It's not the real definition. Let's see what we else we got here. Um, well, I'm on it here. The primary end of marriage is the procreation and education of children. That's the primary end. And we're going to get into what primary means and nuts and bolts, like basic logic, okay? And the analogy I like to use is there cannot be two first place winners to the Boston Marathon. Somebody's got to be primary. You, you can't just say, oh, we're all winners. No, 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 no. Uh, hey, let's go back to Chris, baby. Hang on. Sorry. Hang on. Do, do, do. Share this tab instead. Okay. Loving divinely to say to the okay, other, go back a total gift of okay, self. Wrong. Loving divinely to say to the other. Loving divinely. That's not the purpose of natural marriage is to love divinely. That's not the purpose. Marriage is natural. God made it into a sacrament so that you can have grace to love, but that's not the purpose of natural marriage, nor the purpose of sacramental marriage, because they're both identical. Other, I give my whole being to you. Spare me, bro. You can't give your whole being to anybody, okay? It's, it's not, you can't do it. So therefore, you can't consent to that because it's not possible. 
Mr. Moon. This is why Christopher West bases he he's camera angles and major emotion. He doesn't debate any of this stuff. He won't he blocks you. He won't talk about it. He's just it's just his shtick. It's like let's get super into this like like new agey summit of crazy goo love hoo ha and know these know these terms don't get defined and then um uh, uh pints with aquinas guys just eating it up because they're all super nfp dudes okay here we go i give my whole life to you freely totally faithfully and if it is god's will let there be life what did he just say whole life to you freely freely yes no one can come to marriage forced so consent is free you give consent it's free once you consent ain't no more consent that is the contract you can call it a covenant if you want it's the same dang thing you can call it a car or an automobile doesn't matter it's the same thing totally totally no that's the weasel word right there and everyone's like oh yes i want my spouse to give to him himself to me totally that's what i want that's another way of saying my ego and my feelings need to be fulfilled or something's wrong. And you just create, a, you create a simp out of your husband because she's more emotional. He's more logical. So he just becomes a wimp. I have this, I, I don't know. I probably shouldn't even say this. I don't know. I have a, I wouldn't be surprised if Christopher West, she divorces him someday, just like Captain and Tennille. Cause they keep saying love will keep us together. But you can't hang on to this stuff forever. Now, I don't want that to happen. And I hope it doesn't happen. But I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised uh, in, if in the next 30 years it eventually blows out. Because, you know, you, you can't hold, be stoic forever on this stuff because it's against nature, man. Okay, here we go. Faithfully. And if it is God's will, let there be life. Fine. They are saying, like, like I told you before, this is this life-giving love. No. It's procreation, permanence, fidelity, exclusivity. That's it. Ex you know, AKA exclusivity. And if love flows from that, if it's God's will, let there be love. Okay. And I'm going to get to what say here. Let's just go to St. Thomas Aquinas in a second while I'm talking about it. Dude. Okay. Here's this holy office stuff. We'll get to that in a second. The St. Thomas Aquinas. Hang on. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, here it is. So St. Aquinas, let me get a little bit bigger. Sorry. Hang on. How do I do it? Um, he says, marriage was instituted especially as fulfilling an office of nature. Okay? Natural marriage, sacramental marriage, it's an office of nature every time. Dig it? Wherefore, in its act... The movement of nature must be observed according to which the nutritive power administers to the generative power. So biology takes over and kids happen. That alone, which is in excess of what is required for the preservation of the individual. What that means is life is first, generation is first. Everything that flows from that is for the rest of the stuff the secondary ends, the, the unit of meaning, or whatever you want to call it, the warm fuzzies, the bonding per, what's her face? Um, Kimberly Hahn, all that junk. Um, so St. Thomas Aquinas does define marriage correctly, procreation primary, that which is an excess. Okay, so the preservation of the individual comes second. That because, okay, listen. For the natural order requires the natural order. We're talking nature here. Go, but go, uh, Butker. What's his name? Harrison Butker. There's nothing natural in NFP because the natural order requires that a thing should be perfected in itself. What does that mean? That means we have to define what is perfect marriage. Now, homeboy here is saying perfect marriage is this huge pile of love to the sky and back okay that's a perfect marriage which you cannot achieve there's no such thing as that god loves perfectly we don't dig it and if marriage is required to be perfect in this perfect no so the nat to make it perfect for natural all you need to do is to be able to produce a baby that's why marriage was always valid before all this garbage started happening because if you had kids you were capable no annulment all right 
and afterwards it should be communicated it, and afterwards it should communicate of its perfection to others okay also known as procreation wait and afterwards it should be communicate its perfection to others secondary afterwards means secondary so first in nature the natural order is primary the perfected thing and afterwards communicate its perfection to others therefore all the stuff that saint thomas or that christopher west is all about is secondary to procreation it's not the foundation of marriage and all this intimacy stuff it's what flows from the babies it's not the love first and then the babies flow and this also the order of charity which perfects nature so that's cool as in husbands love your wives wives love your husbands charity perfects nature grace builds on nature right if you want to just go straight up hardcore natural marriage it's like we make babies i don't give a dang how you feel it's in the contract boom that's true that's legal that's catholic but you're a dork because you are not you're without charity okay you got to have charity but not legally charity perfects nature but nature is already perfect with just procreation alone this is what i write here this is why nfp is not nature it makes preservation of the individual primary that's right because you are trying to not get pregnant you're you're going through the motions for other reasons and that's why it can't, it's against nature and that's why that's why um Harrison Bucker was right and therefore since the wife has power over her husband only in relation to the generative and therefore since the wife has power over her husband only in relation to the generative power and not in relation to things directed to the preservation of the individual in other words this is really good the what you have power over the generation but you don't have power to the preservation of the individual that means no right to love so you have a right to make babies but you don't have a right to all this intimacy stuff and all this total gift of self stuff it's all cool it's all good but it's secondary and the pied pipers of marriage destruction feminism like christopher frickin west is saying it's primary the husband is bound to pay the debt to his wife in matters pertaining to begetting of children. That's right, with due regard to his own welfare. So as long as it's you know normal and everything. Um, and same with the wife. Let's get back to this perfection thing up here while we're on it. Hopefully I don't ramble too long, but we're, yeah, it's what we gotta do. Uh, and you can fast forward this, obviously. I, I'm, I'm just saying that uh, you know it gets a little technical here, but okay, here we go. This is a good one. Pius the 12th. Pius the 12th was a mixed bag, just like St. Paul the 6th was a mixed bag. He said some things true, but then he, I think he was walking the halls, Pius, Paul, Paul the 6th, walking the halls of the Vatican, shaking his head going, what did I do? Because he even said marriage without love is valid. Love in Marriage exists independent of love. So Because he's a doctor in canon law. But he goofed it all up with all this NFP. You can't have NFP and marriage at the same time. You just create a train wreck. So with the advent of Margaret procreation, secondary Sanger and all this contraception out there with the Anglicans, there is massive pressure on the Catholic church. So this is in 1944, Pius XII was like, no, no, no. Pius XII caved in 1951 to NFP. He totally did because he says procreate, he, he said procreation can be secondary for grave causes. That's like a break in nature. I've talked about that before. Let's get into this real quick. Okay. Certain publications concerning the purposes of matrimony. That sounds like Theology of the Body, Inc. right there. And their interrelationship and order have come forth within these last years, which either assert that the primary purpose of matrimony is not the generation of offspring, which is exactly what Christopher West just said. The primary purpose is not the generation of offspring. And that's what Trent Horn also says it's not the primary, per he'll say it's about the union of persons and the total gift of self and all this kind of stuff. Uh, or if they say the secondary purposes are not subordinate to the primary purpose, but are independent of it. This gets to that definition of primary. In the secondary purpose cannot be independent. In other words, if you want nutrition, you got to eat the food. Okay. If you want all this 
Christopher West intimacy grooviness. You got to try to get pregnant. You can't do it independent. Okay. In these works, differently primary. Per Sorry, let me just try to talk straight. In these works, you know, theology of the body, different primary purposes of marriage are designated by other writers as, for example, the complement and personal perfection of the spouses. Sounds familiar, huh? Through the complete and mutual participation in life and action. Yes, complete mutual participation. That's exactly what Christopher West is saying. Total, okay? Complete participation of life. That's total. This is, it, then they put it in canon law, the new code. That's how goofy this is. So if they're saying that mutual love and union of the spouses to be nurtured and perfected by the psychic and bodily surrender of one's own person, person is Christopher West's favorite word. He says it with a pregnant P. And, and many other such things. In other words, all that stuff is a pile of trash when you try to make it independent of procreation. Okay, that means you try to, you consider this what we need first, then procreation flows. Wrong, totally wrong. Oh, man, in the same writings, a sense is sometimes attributed to the words of in the current documents of the church. As for example, primary, secondary purpose, which does not agree with these words according to common usage by theologians. Yes, that's right. Primary means something. It doesn't just mean whatever you want. That's like people people say primary purpose of marriage is procreation all the time, but then they they totally consider it secondary in action. They just give it lip service. <laughs> so it means something. This revolution, this is all Pius XII. We're almost done. This revolutionary way of thinking and speaking aims to foster errors and uncertainties. Christopher West is a, is a revolutionary promoting error and uncertainty. That's why we can't define marriage. Anyone can get an annulment because no one can consent to a total friggin' gift of self. More, let alone cons consummate a total gift of self. That only happens at death if you happen to live on the cover of a romance novel for your whole marriage. To avoid which, oops, hang on. Let me undo whatever I did. Okay, where was I? Okay. To avoid which the most eminent and very reverend fathers of the Supreme, blah, 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 blah. when the question was proposed to them, in other words, so they're asking, so everyone comes to Rome and says, hey, CDF or congregation, you know, the dicastery, can we get into changing the purpose of marriage to, to pump up the love, bro, like the Protestants are doing? Come on, Margaret Sangers, everyone's, everyone's doing it. We need to have more love instead of just this cold, cruel, heartless, natural, baby-making stuff? The answer, whether the a question, whether the opinion of certain recent persons, that would be Christopher West, this is back in 1944, but they're basically talking about him, can be admitted, who either deny that the primary purpose of matrimony is the generation of and raising of children. Christopher West might not deny that, but effectively he does. And he just said it in his video, that's what the purpose is. And like I said, Trenhorn does too. So if you deny that procreation is primary or teach that the secondary purposes are not essentially subordinate, that means essence, okay? Essence is natural. That word essentially is a legal term. So in essence, if the secondary purposes are not subordinate to the primary purpose, but are equally first and independent, we have decreed that the answer must be in the negative. You can't say that. In other words, Christopher West is fired, bro, per Pius XII. He's gone. He's out of here. He can't say this stuff, but he's doing it all day long because we're addicted to NFP. And Pius XII later, like I said, caved. Then NFP got institutionalized. And once you tell people they can have their organic Catholic contraception, You've started a forest fire and you're sitting there with a fire, a little, a little natural lock fire hose that says Aquinas on it. Forget it. Forget it. You're burned to a crisp, but eventually everything gets burned up and everyone, we're like, man, maybe we got to get back. Marriage anyone? No one's getting married because you can't even define it. So essentially subordinate, but all are for equally first and independent. So a purpose that's primary must be first and independent because prima 
primera, primary means one, means first. A purpose that's primary has to come first and it must be independent, otherwise it can't exist. What came first, the world or God? Obviously God, because the world can't exist before God because someone had to make it. So the world is dependent on God. They're not codependent. They're not mutually, they're not, they're not inseparable, okay? Neither are procreation and, quote, unity inseparable because procreation comes first and independent. It's got to be independent. It's, it's like I said, they, they, here we talked about, what is it? Uh, essential, perfe oh, wait, we'll get to the essential perfection part. There. Hang on. Let's go down here. All right. So anyway, that was in 1944. Now then, on a related note, there's this Crisis Magazine article, and I got a quote from it. If law is divorced from the marriage of faith and reason, in other words, it's not reasonable to have an undefined, unattainable primary purpose. It's like buying a car where you never tell them what the price is, and the price is infinite, and you want them to buy it. Just make payments. You can't do it. It's just no. So if law is divorced from the marriage, it disintegrates into nothing but that which serves the merest whim of whoever happens to wield power. And the reason why I say Christopher West promotes feminist marriage is 90% of the time, the wife wields the power because they're the ones who do the divorcing because they're ruled a lot of times by emotion. Okay. Another name for this sort of law is tyranny. That's why there's MIGTO and all that. People aren't getting involved because marriage law today is tyranny because there's no law because the primary purpose is JP2, Christopher West, undefined. It's lawless. Now, let's get to one more thing as far as what, let's get to the nuts and bolts, the basics of the primary purpose. This is from Mr. Uh, Long-winded guy who's really good. He's getting old now. He's in the, he's, I don't know where he is exactly. Um, it's uh, uh, Marshner over there at, you know, Christendom College. Marshner's good. This is his article. He says, here's the way that Father Anthony Ostheimer stated the, this matter about primary purpose in his far reaching the, 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 the family, a Thomistic study. Okay. This is like basic 101 stuff that none of us knows anymore. The primary end of anything is the principal good for which a thing exists. It is the end that first arises from the very nature of the thing. Okay, we're talking nature. Marriage is nature. Even if it's sacramental marriage, it's nature. It has to be natural and is sufficient to account for the essential perfection of the thing. All right, so the primary purpose is sufficient to account for the essential perfection of a thing. Therefore, it has to be definable, finite, and achievable. That's what making babies is, all right? You can define it, it's achievable, it's natural, and it's the essence of marriage, apart from any other contributing ends. So, like St. Thomas Aquinas said earlier, the primary and the first thing you need to be able to do is make a baby and everything that flows from that is gravy. Okay. The love, the unity, if you want to call it that, the warm fuzzies, the bonding, all that charity. Okay. That all flows, but you got to have the baby first. Secondary end, however, is some added or accessory purpose for which the thing exists. It may proceed from the primary itself which is exactly what St. Thomas Aquinas says, or from the nature of the thing itself, but only for its integral and not its essential perfection. There's that word again, essential, essence, legal term, legal essence, the essence of a cow is what it is. It does, you can't add or subtract to it. The cow could be, you know, happy cows make great cheese and all that stuff, but sad cows make bad cheese but there's still a cow, okay? So the essence of the cow is what it is. You can treat them good, you can treat them bad. They make great ice cream or bad ice cream, but they're still a cow. 
uh, of itself, it is in. So the secondary ends of itself is if, is insufficient to account for even the essential perfection which the nature of the thing demands. So super basic. You've you have to start first with the initiative of the baby, the procreation, and the rest flows because there is no essential imperfection of marriage with just a secondary end. Christopher West is saying, yes, there is. That secondary end is the total gift of self, and that's the essential perfection. So you're always trying to shoot for this pie-in-the-sky stuff that is not meant to be primary, which is why marriage is killed through theology of the body because it turns into basically feelings worship and you'll never get there. And then it, you, you, you've, it's like the beating will continue until morale improves. That's kind of what's going on. Um, anyway, that we, we already did this part about Chris, uh, about uh, Suma here. And I, I don't know if there's any more after that. I think that's it on that. Good. So let's get back to uh, homie dude. Hang on. Share this tab instead. Sorry, that took a long time. I know. I know. Hang on. Let's make this a little. Whoop. All right, Chris. And guess what that's called? The marriage commitment itself. No, that's not called the marriage commitment. Whatever he does. Let's go back. You freely, totally, faithfully, and if it is God's will, let there be life. And guess what that's called? The marriage commitment itself. Uh, there is no such thing as a, as a marriage commitment. There is a marriage contract. There's a marriage agreement. There's a the terms of the of the contract. Call it a covenant. Call it whatever you want. But that's not what it is because it doesn't have to be this total thing. It's just the right over the body for acts like we already talked about. The original plan of God for sexual union, for sexual intimacy is to be a sacrifice incremental representation of the way God loves. All right. So this is more vintage Christopher West stuff, which I don't know if I'm even smart enough to untangle, but it sounds so good. All this, like it's the you know, marriage relations are Eucharistic and they're so deep. And uh, the main thing we already covered in this video is what he said, which is marriage is this total unity of hoo ha. And that's where he's, wrong everything flows from that bad okay that's where christopher west is wrong that's why he goes on and on trying to prop up his secondary is primary stuff that's why he doesn't talk about primary and secondary he doesn't because he can't that's why he doesn't debate and god loves through that marital covenant i have betrothed myself to you forever <sighs> God can make covenants with people, but God is the initiator of the covenant, okay? When you get married, each the each spouse initiates the contract and it's, God doesn't initiate the marriage contract, the spouses do. God says to his people. That's why marriage is a sacrament. No, marriage is a sacrament to give grace to nature because nature is we're making babies, period. You can feel good, bad. I don't give a dang, whatever. That's nature. Just like your average aardvarks, get it together. There are, you, you know, it's like, hey, dude, well, here we go. We're making some aardvarks. But it's a sacrament so that charity can enter and add to the contract. But it must flow afterwards, not before. It's not the basis of marriage. The contract to create babies is the basis. This stuff flows from it. I think I've beat that up pretty good. Hope, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm making these videos because I could put the stuff on Facebook for years and it's hard to get traction. I'm, I'm blocked so many places. Nobody even listens anymore. This is too tough. Because it's meant to reveal divine life-giving love in the world. Life-giving love. There's that phrase again, which you want to avoid. Life-giving love is a diabolical inversion of the definition of marriage. It's it's love giving life. Life is first, not love, because nature is the contract to make a baby, not to make love. Sexual intercourse properly understood. Properly understood is is code for the way I understand it. As you know, that's what the, it's meant to be an expression and renewal of wedding vows. Now, no, 
Now, okay, all that, that's the other thing everyone says. This is my renewal of my wedding vows. That's why they have to have consent every time. No, it's not a renewal of your wedding vows. Your wedding vows were one time, okay? Charity is your, your wedding vows, but it's not the contract. Contract is just to, is to make babies, okay? It's not a representation of your wedding vows because consent only happens once. Christopher West says consent happens every time. That's because he's saying the secondary ends Mutual love, all this stuff requires consent because you can't force love. Okay. This creates nothing but lawless marriage, as I said, where you're constantly consenting, which means you're beholden to the feelings. You're you're trying to pop the question to your wife, and then she says yes. Okay. You got that done. She can say yes or no. But after that, there ain't no more questions and answers. It's answered, it's done. He's saying it's perpetual. That sounds nice, but it ruins marriage because you got nothing. Now, if this, my brother, is what you are wanting to say to your wife and she is putting up resistance, uh, I'm too tired, I'm not interested, et cetera, et cetera, then chances are there's something going on in her heart. But if your heart is like, really, I don't want true into me see into me right? see right? described into me see kind of clever but also insightful if we're not being truly vulnerable there in the marital act right if we're not really wanting to renew our wedding vows really express deep affirmation Bro, chill out of my spouse Sorry, as yeah. a person but we have that consumer usorial attitude that we learn in a pornographic culture what he just said is the marital debt is pornographic culture that's what he just said this consumer usorial attitude um that's code for marriage is love, not procreation. And he says all this stuff and everyone's eating it up but because they're not, they ha this hasn't been explained. And all they get is this avalanche of marriage is love from everywhere, USCCB on down. And no one can untangle it because you, sorry, sorry, because NFP is at the heart of it. NFP requires Christopher West and JP2 to exist. Theology of the body is the is the delivery system for legalized NFP. Without theology of the body, NFP falls because you can't you have to have the secondary purposes as primary to get NFP to fly, which is why they had to do this to rescue Pius the 12th who said procreation is primary except when it's not. her resistance would be understandable. Now, let's get to the second point here. We've gone to Almost counseling done. and a history of physical abuse in her life came up. Do you have any advice? Without a doubt, my brother, and here I have great sympathy for what you have certainly suffered in this situation. Without a doubt, there are wounds. Yeah. So basically he's saying, okay, my wife's got daddy issues and who knows who all else. And, and she's been abused, so she can't quite open up and she's frigid and she's this and that. The solution, though, is not more theology of the body because it just fuels the I have to feel good stuff. And the, you're just feeding the wound, in other words. You're kind of keep it going, okay? You have to let them know that the 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 marital debt is the contract and with grace it can be it can be made more palatable or you can get into it more because you know this is what god wants and ask for grace to do that but if you don't know that's what it is you're constantly trying to just feel better and then the husband is doing everything he can to make her feel better and it's just this downward spiral of feelings because that's not the nature of the contract. When you fight nature, you lose. And that's what theology of the body does, which is why there's massive pushback that people can't, you don't really hear about a lot, but all this anti-NFP stuff that's like, it doesn't work. It's a drag. It's retarded. But it's politically incorrect. And that, that sentiment has no voice. No one's out there explaining how trashy NFP is on the marriage because that's just super not PC. And no one will touch it because their career is over. If you say NFP is evil, if is is intrinsically evil.
But since I have no boss, no life, no nothing, I can say it. But if I were working at Catholic University of America or if I had a podcast that I was trying to make money on or something, eh, no way. In your wife's heart, that compromise her ability to come to the marriage bed with an open heart, with vulnerability, and with a desire truly to be a gift to you. There's a wound there. And in a certain sense, you know, we... We are all so deeply wounded. <laughs> grew up in this pornographic culture. We all have sexual wounds. But when there has been... <laughs> you guys got to listen to Stanford Nutting, man. God. Specific physical... What's his name? What's his name? Juan Corpus Delecti. Sexual abuse. Those yeah, wounds that go very, notes. very deep. And they do compromise a person's ability to enter beautifully, freely, and with joy into the marriage bed. So when you try to make the secondary ends primary, you just create problems because it's not natural. You can't, you can't tell God how marriage is going to be. God tells us and everything else is like doomed to failure. You can try to keep it up for a little while, but uh, -uh. my advice would be buckle up. All right. That's, that's the end of it. I think I've rambled on long enough. So anyway, um, uh, in fact, I know I've rambled on long enough. Um, uh, I don't really hold care about the, all the like and subscribe stuff. Did I mess something up here? Hang on a second. There was one thing I wanted to show you. Let's see here. I had it. Sorry. Here. Is it right here? Anyway, um, people. Yeah. Christopher, shoot. Christopher West. Where is it? Hang on. Let me, let me find it. I'll, I'll be back in a second. Anyway, what I was going to say was uh, all that like and subscribe stuff. That's nice. I, Mo I could use more subscribers and likes. I don't really give a dang, but uh, this is important stuff. And uh, I want more people to see it, of course. And like I said, you just you just bug the heck out of me in the comments. And I'm going to talk with you as much as you want. No running away. I'll put a bunch of notes in the in the show notes and all that stuff. And I, I guess that's a wrap. Uh, there's so much more one could say about Christopher West. And I don't do it perfectly, but I try my best. But um, I want you guys to blow me out of water or whatever is the problem. And we'll see you next time. There. There you go. That's it. Sorry. Sorry, Christopher. Maybe we'll be friends someday. <laughs>